Well, Andrew Caddick has just bowled a snorter to Mark Richardson. Richardson has gone for 76. Nathan Astle is at the wicket-taking guard. He's played a great rear guard to save New Zealand against England before Eden Park on the, the last tour. What is in Astle now? This brilliant natural stroke maker has to contend with Andrew Caddick pumped, really pumped, adrenaline flowing through his veins. Three slips, two gullies and a short leg and 15 minutes until the lunch break. Well, Astle's away. Had a leg gully been there, he might have been away to the dressing room. That's Nathan Astle. It ain't the first time and neither is it the last time. That's Nathan Astor too. <laughs> you give him width, he'll look to go for it. Well, not a lot of foot movement, but this is what we talk about hand-eye coordination for Astor. See, the foot just goes to there. But such a good eye. Yeah, but I think it's a not a bad little bit of bowling either. I think it's yeah. a carrot ball, isn't it? it, it and, and because Astle's good enough, he's got a lot of bat on it, but had it swung another inch or two, then you've sucked him in. Risky, but a bold stroke. He did throw a lot of bat at it, Astle, as he tends to do. And then it was one bounce four. You know, I think that's just swung a touch. I think it's just swung it. Caddick's pitched it up a little bit further. Drawn Astle into the stroke. It's a flamboyant stroke. Just look if this shape does. Yeah, starts wide and goes a little bit wider. So Astle adhering to the old adage, if you're going to flash, flash hard. And he did. Now crunching. Cut shot back behind point. This is good counter-attacking. Much better stroke from Astle because he looked to get up over and hit it into the turf. Top of the bounce. And pass point for another boundary. He's got six now. It's a good stroke. In the air. And uh, Caddick thinks that there was an element of good fortune in there. And he stood and stared for a considerable length of time. This will be an interesting battle. It's a little overcast. Lights have all gone back on again. And will Hoggard swing it? Oh, good start, wasn't it? It's a little uppish from Nathan Astor, but it was pretty well dead straight. Pretty well timed. I like this approach from New Zealand. This is positive, isn't it? Both Astle and Fleming come out after lunch with positive intent. He's bowling from his favourite end again now, Matthew Hoggard. Straight away, Astle into action and is forced a field change. Mid on is now placed. One bounce four, but only just. And uh, I think Nathan Astle will get a couple more of these because it was not played convincingly. It's a good piece of bowling. A very good bouncer. Very straight. Yeah, that's right. Good line. Look at that. Right over middle stump. And really, he was forced into that sort of almost a knee-jerk shot, wasn't it? Look at that. Yeah. Third one in the over. Big over for Astle, big over for New Zealand. Who thought for Hoggard, 189 for three. Hasn't happened for him today, for Matthew Hoggard. 14 runs off his first over back. 
Yeah. Well, that'll run away for four. Come through the gully region. It's 50 for Nathan Astle, and it is a well played 52. Ten boundaries. Some typical strong Astle shots through the offside. A valuable knock. It's in the air, but it's wide. Boundary. Uh, it's stand and deliver batting. And he's as good a sort of player as just about anybody in the world, I'd say, Nathan Astle. Rufal. Well, that's more, that's really a lovely stroke. Much more convincing. Oh, it's a fantastic hit. He's onto that quickly, almost as if he felt the short pitcher had to come. And he's hit it hard and flat. There's a guy out there, what, five yards from where the ball was? Never moved a muscle, just had a look for it. And then heard it against the boards. Yes, I think even Hoggard there was impressed in a way. Beautiful, clean strike. Oh, he really is such a natural hitter of a cricket ball. Great eye-hand coordination. Two forty-two for four. That is very classical. It's a perfect use of the feet. Stays nicely in the stroke and makes sure that he hits right through the line of the ball. See, the head doesn't move up and down too much either. It's, it's a glide. That's gone again. Just for four, though, this time. Man back on the pull shot. Fine leg, deep backward square leg. Astle picks the gap perfectly. It's a deliberate attempt at a bouncer to get him hooking down the uh, deep backward square throat, but there's a lot of control. He's swung inside it with the body, rolled the wrists on it. That's gone too, this time in front of square. An even better stroke. Magnificence of Astle is uh, evident in the last half an hour. Collard, absolutely collared here, Andy Caddick. Nathan Astle is reading him at the moment like a book. Unless, of course, I bowl you some half volleys, in which case your timing is beyond me and beyond most other players in the world. Again, most interestingly, Chris Cairns, who sadly we won't see for the rest of the series. And then with an average of 40, the great Bert Sutcliffe. Excellent play. Excellent play. It's just so controlled. He's really just doing as he pleases with every English bowler. This is not an easy shot because you're hitting slightly against the turn. It's the on drive, which means you've got to clear your hip out of the way. Oh, it's a misfield. It's a hundred for Nathan Astle. Fabulous innings to watch. Very meaningful too for Nathan Astle, it's on his home ground. Eighth test century, the strike rate is extraordinary. His execution precision, outstanding. He hasn't dwelt on it for very long, has he? have another look at how he got there it was an extremely well controlled stroke he got on top of the ball which 
meant that Craig White had to do some fielding or to try to do some fielding. Oh dear. There will be a performance as a substitute fielder that Craig White will remember with a great deal of fondness, having dropped a catch down at third man in the first innings as well. He's got another chance to prove himself that he can't do that, pull that one in either. He's still enjoying himself here. He hasn't had a good uh, run at Jay Stadium in his career. High score of just 45. And New Zealand bring 300 up. England are persisting with this bouncer tactic that Astle has in pretty complete control when a length ball of off stump he'd push into the covers and Flintoff could bowl five at the other guy. Hasn't been that sort of match though, has it? <laughs> You're right, it hasn't actually. It hasn't followed logic, has it? The links ball pushed into the covers too wide <laughs> great shot wasn't it well they're coming off his bat like <laughs> lovely sound it's so crisp Crack. cover which was uh, three quarters of the way back was sort of wanting around to pick that up and it just raced by 19 fours two sixes Astle now 15. Oh, blazing his own trail. He has played some fabulous shots. That's a screamer. Nice shape. <laughs> he just uh, he bent the back leg a little just to get a bit lower towards it. Vincent might miss out. Oh, that's a beauty. That is a beauty. Straight down the ground. The best shot in the game. That's like a one iron. Right out of the screws. He stays in this. It's really done with uh, almost a forearm jab. And he's hit it, as you say, flush. from Nathan Astle. Session by session this match has been a ripper to watch. They're on the feet. Every now and then you see a player who's just completely in what you call the zone. Thought was, even for a while Flintoff was yesterday. Well Astle is in the zone. He's now got to 100 in boundaries, Nathan Astle. Look at that, 22 fours and two sixes. 130 from 127 balls. We've had more than 300 runs today in 72 overs. And that might well be four more. 18 from the over. Hoggard cannot believe it. 333 for eight. Goes Astle again. Whoa! It's miles back. And Billy's enjoying it too. Holy cow. <laughs> That's massive. It's enormous. Uh, humongous. It's extraordinary. Hold on to your hats, there are more fireworks to come. Oh yeah. 
they sure are this is unbelievable entertainment you, you couldn't you couldn't write a script for this in test match cricket you'd be thrilled with it in a one day game Well, Hoggard has gone for 112. This is 23rd over. He must not uh, know where to bowl. He's uh, asked off since reaching the 100. Three dot balls. <laughs> 47 runs. And just a matter of overs. Eighteen balls. Yeah. Oh, to a play. That's a hundred and fifty for Nathan Astor. Wow. That's one of the most ripping displays of power batting you could ever hope to see. Now 20 balls it took him to go from 100 to 152. 20 balls, 20 balls, 20. Oh, that's four more. Six more! Mamma mia! One hundred and eighty three to win. No, 184 to win. Oh. Absolutely breathtaking. Average just climbing up to 40, and uh, so it should. High score, 158. There it is. It goes past the uh, Perth knock before Christmas. Right in front of his home crowd and family. There he goes again. That's huge! That's on the roof! That is miles up there! It's left the stadium. Andrew Caddick, brand new ball, has just been put out of Jay Stadium. I've never seen anything like this in my life. The cameraman must be absolutely going giddy trying to follow this. They're doing their best, but boy. 178 to win. And they've got to find another ball. That's the delay at the moment. They're going to find a ball that is, what, three, four, four overs old. So how are they going to do that? Four overs old has been hammered everywhere. Look at that for a skyscraper. It's just unbelievable. Look at the right there. Look at the runs that have just burst forth. The second new ball, 57 runs. 23 balls. Of which six of them went to the boundary, four of them cleared the boundary. Astor 164. He's uh, seriously got sights on 200 here. And everybody up now saving the single, bar the man at deep backward square. So Astor just places the ball down the ground. And he'd like this to go for three. My suspicion is that it'll go for four. Well, that's probably all right. Uh, I reckon they'd rather bowl at Cairns. 76 for nine now. That was a nine-wicket win uh, at Wellington against Australia in a one-off test. Uh, Vic Pollard, that was a Nottingham with uh, Congdon. Jeremy Coney, who'll ever forget that. Uh, 50 for the last wicket with Ewan Chatfield to beat Pakistan at Carisbrook.
Turner here at Christchurch, Congdon here at uh, Christchurch as well, two years later. And Mark Burgess in the West Indies. It'll be interesting uh, being a fly on the wall there, those three. Astor Cairns, Vincent the runner. And seven one to win. But Vincent didn't say much. <laughs> Imagine Chris Cairns would have just said, well, Nathan, this is just one of those moments, one of those days. Just keep batting. It's instinctive. It's in the zone. It's supernatural. Interesting that nobody is back in the mid-off area. England with a more orthodox field. And so Astor's just going to advance and just nail anything. Six more. Oh. Well, the sound of this is <laughs> shotgun stuff. Charging. Hussain has uh, left it open. Astor says, I'll just have it. Top of the bounce. Momentum into the stroke. That is... What is that? Now he goes leg side. Lordy Lord, six more. <sighs> one seven five, Astor. No, one eight one. Is that four or six? Amazing. That might have been six. Nice innings by New Zealand versus England in New Zealand. This overtakes Jeremy Coney's one seven four. Not out in the 83 84. Oh, hello! What a shot into the com box! A massive blow! Three sixes in a row by Nathan Astill off Andrew Caddick, England's premier strike bowler. This is the most extraordinary display of hitting of a cricket ball that I think I've ever seen. That the world has ever seen. This has climbed over where we sit, over the commentary box. Nothing wrong with the delivery. It is just the most pure, perfect exhibition of hitting of all time. And Hussain cannot believe it. Astle has 187. New Zealand need 153 to win the game. This partnership is worth 64. They've only been out there together for 26 balls. Some of those are being blocked by Chris Cairns. The last seven balls bowled by Caddick have gone 4, 6, 6, 4, 6, 6, 6. That's another six. Another massive blow, slower ball from Flintoff and crunched over long on by this completely extraordinary performer. Slow ball, 105 k's and Aston had to do all the work and he did. Timing here, it's a great delivery. It doesn't matter. It's one hit away from 200 now. It's a lovely shot, through extra cover for four. It's a really classy little punch drive. That's a great shot. And some men back at long off and deep extra cover, but he gets it through. Two away. From most scintillating double century I think ever seen in this country goes to 199 Astle has faced just 152 balls I mean he's he's got it one more run Two of the four fastest 200s, therefore, would have occurred here in successive days. 
Thorpe yesterday, Astral here today. One more to get. That is 200 for Nathan Astle. It is enough to say that nobody in history has made 200 as fast as this, in greater style as this, or maybe to mean as much as this. The fastest 200 in Test cricket. So Hoggard back into the attack. Up in the air and uh, out of the ground. Six more. That's why the bumper's a risk. What a stupid bowling. It's a good shot because Astor's actually had to fetch it from outside the off stump, but the pace is what he's backing on. 130 Ks. That's what Astor wants. 100 partnership up in the 45th minute. Ten sixes now for Astor. Oh, it's a lovely stroke. Beautiful cricket stroke. <laughs> Hoggard lost his line here. And uh, it's just a, a nice little tuck off the, the hips by Nathan Astor comfortably put away pace is there for him he just has to lean on it six men on the fence doesn't bother Astle he hits it over them that's halfway up the seats it's another mighty blow this guy isn't just hitting it over people's heads he's hitting it so far it's just it's mesmeric yeah, I counted about 36 rows. That's just magnificent. I mean, the, the balance, when you're moving down the wicket, to hold that balance against a, a ball 132 k's. See you later. because Nathan Astor has played the most fantastic innings that I think any of us have ever seen. 222 to give his team the chance. To give the world a reminder of what a thrilling game Test Match Cricket can be, albeit in the most unusual fashion here. This has been an extraordinary game of cricket. Memorable for so many things, but maybe most memorable for this man, for Nathan Astle, who from nothing has given us the finest entertainment you'd ever hope to see. Let's just salute him.